What's up you guys? My name's Rex, and I'm not a doctor yet by any means, but I did score in the 99th percentile on the MCAT, and so I'm gonna share with you all of my best tips to know before you start studying for the MCAT, all of my top tricks to use while you're studying, and then all of what I think some just general secrets people won't tell you about the MCAT. And next Wednesday, I'll be releasing a video going over my entire study schedule and how I studied for the MCAT, and probably more importantly, how I wish I would have studied and how I would recommend to you to study for the MCAT if you're just starting out. Any questions, comments, or concerns? At any point, be sure to drop them down below in the comments. I will read and respond to every single comment. That being said, let's jump into it. All right, my first tip is to know and really make a decision before you start studying of what are your goals with the MCAT. Are you gonna be someone going for a 99th percentile, 100th percentile, 90th plus percentile score, or are you just going for a great score that's gonna get you into medical school and fits in with your goals and what you're trying to do? Because I really think they're two totally different approaches to the MCAT, and the sooner you make that decision, the better success you'll ultimately have. So giving you a little bit of advice of what that might look like is sort of my next tip or sort of my two general study ideas, strategies, trends that I really think everyone should follow one of these two camps when it comes to the MCAT. But that being said, these might not work for you. You should know yourself and know your study strategies and what has worked for you on standardized tests in the past and really apply them to the MCAT. All right, so first schedule is I think everybody for the most part who isn't going for some crazy 100th percentile score should break up their studying into four phases. So step number one in that plan is to go through and just do a general overview of all the info on the MCAT. And so this is where having some seven book set like from Kaplan or from Princeton is really good and just get a broad overview of everything so that you can go on to step number two and really identify your weakness areas. Once you've identified your weakness areas, you can go on to step three and really just do targeted learning and where you're weak. You gotta trust yourself that you've done your general overview, which is probably the longest part, and that's where you've identified what you're good at, and you don't wanna to waste too much of your time going over those areas because there is so much information on the MCAT, you really wanna be focused on this step three of where do I really need to learn? That's my targeted area. And so then that leads to step four, which is just practicing. You wanna get into a schedule of where you're taking full length exams that really simulate test day and building up your stamina and building up your test taking strategies so that you can ultimately apply them on test day. And so now I'd contrast this of your general study strategy and my biggest tip of if you wanna get a perfect score is basically you have to relearn everything within the context of how it's gonna be asked in the MCAT. And so this is a way longer step, way more in depth and way more time consuming than you probably need to do if you're really trying for that perfect score. And then once you do that, it's like that SNL skit of where it's step number one, identify a problem. Step number two, fix it. Identify another problem, fix it. Repeat steps one and two until everything is fixed. And so you really just need to Practice, review your errors. Practice, review your errors. And that's really what it comes down to for trying to get that 99th percentile because you have to understand that you can only miss one or two, three questions on each passage. And so you're really wasting a lot of time compared to how I would recommend to study if you're just trying to go for a great score. All right, and so just a couple tricks I have that I used or wish I used rather when I was going through the MCAT. And so for the two science sections, I don't think there's huge tricks. The biggest thing is identifying your weak areas, studying those, and really getting into that practice phase as soon as possible, and really targeting where you keep missing questions when you go through exams. Now cars, my biggest trick is that there are no tricks. And all of the test companies, whether it's Princeton Review or Kaplan, will sell you some massive perfect strategy that this is the great secret strategy that will guarantee to get you your perfect score. And whether that's skimming, reading the questions first, doing outlining, all of that stuff are not tricks. They are techniques that are gonna work for some people and not work for others. And you should try them out, but don't stick with them if they're not working for you. I don't believe that there are any universal tricks for cars that are gonna help you guarantee you get the best score you can get. For me, I really didn't use any tricks. I read the passages in detail and then I answered the questions. I didn't do any outlining, I didn't skim first, I didn't read the questions first. 
that that's not to say there were not some techniques and stuff I picked up along the way, but that's outside the scope of this video where it's just quick, quick tips. Biggest tip and trick for cars is there is no universal trick. All right, next thing for Psych Soch, I really wish I had found this earlier, but it's the Khan Academy notes from, I think MCAT bros are the ones that did the notes where there is detailed, there's both like the lazy OCD version and then there's more detailed ones, but they're basically just bullet pointed notes of all the Khan Academy videos related to Psych Soch. I wish I would have just studied those and completely ignored all of the chapters and the whole book that Kaplan has. That was not worth my time. Psych Soch, you really just need to approach it as sort of like a trivia section of where here is this different psychologist compared to this psychologist. Do you remember them? Awesome resource. I'll link it down below. All right. So now these secrets are mostly my opinions. I am not an expert by any means. And so don't take them as fact. All right, so my first secret is I believe the AAMC actual full length practice exams are much better than from any test company I've ever seen. Their questions, when they compare to the AAMC, they're just not the same, not as accurate. So if you're really trying to get near test day, use the actual AAMC ones. Additionally with that is always be careful with the first exam that you take from like a prep company, if they sell you a set of three exams, that first one is always gonna be scored way more harshly than the other ones so that they can guarantee your score improves by their guaranteed four points. So I would actually say, take the second test first, go back and take the first exam and see if you can actually just get the same score because that first exam is gonna be way harder. But when you do like an initial diagnostic, don't take that first exam because it's not gonna be very accurate in all likelihood. All right, secret number two, your MCAT score doesn't really matter, but it actually does a lot. And so obviously your MCAT score matters and it matters a ton for different schools. But where I'm coming from when I say this is that it's usually not gonna be the factor that decides if you're gonna be a doctor or not. What it will be the factor in is it's deciding what schools you might become a doctor at. That's how you should view it, is your MCAT score is gonna help you decide which chunk of schools, whether it's high tier, mid tier, or the lower tier schools you're applying to. The bottom line is once you have your MCAT score, you know which schools to apply to. All schools have sub 10% acceptance rates, and whether you have a top score or a medium score, you're still applying with about the same percentage chance at any given school. Secret number three, the analogy of ACT, SAT to undergrad admissions as MCAT is to medical school admissions is not true whatsoever. With ACT, SAT, you can walk your huge SAT score to any school in the country and they're gonna accept you. MCAT, not the same thing. I had a high MCAT score. All of the schools that had a lower average MCAT score, they generally did not even offer me an interview. Medical school admissions is much more about finding a good fit for a school. And so thinking that you get a really high MCAT score does not mean you can just, oh, guarantee admission to any school you want to go to. Rather, it's making you self-select up to more difficult schools. Overall, your chance of getting in is way better, but that doesn't mean you can take that and have some safety school that you apply to that has an average MCAT of 503 and you walk your 515 down there and think you're automatically getting in. All right, secret number four. The MCAT is only an IQ test if you let it be. So what I mean by this is the MCAT is not really at all an IQ test and don't think it is. Just because you have an initial score that's not very good doesn't mean it can not be massively improved. That being said, it is a little bit like an IQ test as far as it's highly correlated to ACT and SAT, which are pretty well correlated to IQ tests, especially historically. But that being said, you can improve massively on the MCAT and it's much more knowledge based. So don't think, oh, just because I started off poor, oh, it's like an IQ test. I must not have a good enough IQ. That's not true whatsoever. That being said, if you do have a high Q, I'm sure there's a correlation of how well you do on your first exam without studying. So if you don't study at all, it'll become an IQ test. If you do study, that makes it not be an IQ test and it's much more about how you prepare. All right, secret number five. Biggest thing to remember about the MCAT is the MCAT tests your ability to take the MCAT. You have to understand that the study strategies you use to maybe have a ton of success in your undergraduate experience 
may not work at all for the MCAT. Similarly, the way you learned material at your specific school may not be applicable and be the specific way it's tested on the MCAT. So that's why it's really important to learn about how the MCAT is asking questions, learn what's on the MCAT, and really have to study for the test. You can't just blindly trust that you were well prepared from all of your undergraduate coursework. Well, that's a huge foundation and helps a ton. You really need to focus study specifically to how the MCAT is going to be asking specific material. So final secret that I really didn't know is that the MCAT actually does matter a ton for scholarships. Overall, scholarships are not super common for medical school, but there are some schools that do give out scholarships. And truth be told, this is where the MCAT, a really high score on the MCAT, can most benefit you. All of the people that I know that have gotten like full scholarships or full rides to medical schools, they are typically people with very high MCAT scores. Obviously, there's a ton more to it than that, but when it comes to that scholarship committee, they do seriously look at your GPA and MCAT score, and that can be a big determining factor. All right, so this last one, I'm not even gonna call it a secret. It's just me calling out those Princeton Review commercials that show up on almost every YouTube video I watch because they're really annoying, and I'm so sick of that guy's voice. And he always brings up that students who score between a 510 and a 513 have three times the acceptance rate of those that score between a 498 and 501. Okay, so obviously MCAT score matters, but just pet peeve as far as I like good statistics, that is obviously so confounded. If you look at the chart here, you probably would have to pause the video to look at it, so don't do that. Trust me when I say this, I've done the math. If you actually look at it, you can see that obviously MCAT score is massively confounded by GPA, which it's highly correlated to. So those people that are getting a 498 to 501 also, broadly speaking, have significantly lower GPAs, and that is massively factoring in. It's not the MCAT score alone that is causing that three times acceptance rate. It's important to remember that. That being said, it's not a totally misleading statistic. It does, for most GPA ranges, turn out to be about a two to two and a half times increase or up to as high as like a 2.7. So it's not far from three. It's not totally misleading, but I just hate those commercials. So I'm calling them out. And that's not to say I have any problem with Princeton Review. As far as I know, Princeton Review, Kaplan, all the test companies, they're all great go with whichever one you feel most comfortable with. All right, and so those are my tips and tricks. If you wanna hear about how I specifically studied, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. They'll be coming next Wednesday if everything goes according to plan. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, again, I'd love to hear them down below. I will answer and read every single comment I get. Until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great.